Okay, today I'm going to take a look at this uh, Whedon number no. one uh, live steam engine, which was made um, from probably 1931 through 33, something like that, the very early 30s. Um, there's not a lot of information on this uh, engine. Um, it's not uh, it's not that easy to find. I don't know how many were made, but uh, this one is a pretty good example of it. Um, the one thing that was different about these engines that compared to some of the other live steam engines, this had a crankshaft drive. There's two double acting pistons, which means they push and pull with the uh, steam power. It runs through a crank here, and that's geared to both wheels. Both wheels uh, drive, and there's, there's a connecting rod between the two wheels, but that doesn't do much other than go along for the ride. So, um, it's also got uh, a couple little holes here in the exhaust piping. Now I'm assuming that's to oil this thing because um, it's a good way to get steam oil into the cylinders. Um, this one was in, in really pretty good shape when I got it. It, it sort of ran but it needed a, a quick going through so what I did was uh, I took the uh, cylinders apart all the uh, all the gasketing packing was shot so I, uh, I resealed the cylinders um, I reflattened the valve body and the, the uh, mating edge of the piston assembly and I went through and I, I lubed it and uh, I did replace um, I did replace this uh, steam feed to the cylinders because there was a big kink in it so I, I think that was uh, inhibiting the um, flow of steam. In any case the, uh, the cylinders seemed like they were in pretty good shape so uh, I gave it a test and it, it actually runs pretty good. I haven't sent it around my track yet because uh, my track is indoors and uh, when you when you run these uh, live steam engines indoors it, it can get pretty exciting so uh, I'll have to see at some point. So in a couple minutes I'm going to fire it up and uh, you can just see it run stationary. Okay this is the um, this is the burner assembly which uh, came with the engine which was a real plus with this thing because a lot of times they're missing but it's a it's a six uh, six position burner and it's alcohol fed with this uh, pretty standard uh, type of alcohol reservoir and this thing fits up into the um, bottom of the train the one thing I found about some of these live steam engines it's important to adjust the flame on these uh, alcohol wicks because a lot of times you get it and you get a big high yellow flame and it, it comes over the side of the boiler and uh, it's pretty exciting. The whole train looks like it's on fire. But, but the best thing you can do is get these things to, to uh, burn with a nice blue flame. So I took a little time to adjust these. Um, you need the wick to stick out a lot less than you might think. And that seems to be about the best. And when I did that it, uh, it came up the steam faster. And another trick on these engines is don't just fill the boiler up. Um, it's it's worthwhile to, to uh, take some notes and try different levels of uh, water to see um, exactly how much water you really need to make the thing run successfully. If you put too much water in it then it, it takes forever to heat up. Uh, if you put too little water in it then it uh, it goes dry and that, that can be disastrous for the boiler. if, if nothing else all the solder seams come undone so uh, it's kind of important to uh, determine how much uh, water you want to stick in the boiler and it's also uh, matters how much um, alcohol you put in the reservoir because uh, if you put too much in it'll, it'll burn too long so there's there's a every one every engine is different so it's worth playing with the thing a little bit first to see what's the optimum balance of uh, alcohol and water okay now that uh, I have it all fired up. That took about uh, three minutes to fire up, and amazingly, it starts by itself. The uh, the crank arms are quartered, so uh, there's always a power stroke, no matter what position the wheels are in. So um, that's pretty good. Now I've I've got the proper steam oil to lubricate this, and uh, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not going to send it around my track just yet because. Uh, I'm not convinced that it's safe to do inside yet. I got to give it just a little more time and, and, and see how it actually runs on the track. So, uh, in any case, it, uh, it's running pretty good.
it's not a fast train at all, and, and from what I understand, it doesn't have a ton of pulling power, but uh, it's not too bad here. It's got some power to it. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it actually does run. Um, I have some track I can set up outside on my deck, and, and probably uh, in the spring when it's a lot warmer than it is now, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, try it out and see how it goes and see if I can get it to pull some cards or something. That's a uh, very smooth running train, and uh, with the push-pull cylinders, it, to me it should actually have some, some decent power, but uh, that remains to be seen. In any case, it was, uh, it was a very complete train, so uh, I think I was pretty lucky to get this thing. Okay, well that's about it. Um, thanks for looking at my video.